<laughs> yes, guys, I hear y'all. And in today's video, I'm gonna show y'all how you can create a form just like this one in JSONUI. The naive approach would probably just be to go into your textures folder and change the textures of the buttons and the background. But not only does this change the texture for all forms, but it also comes with a lot of side effects. And with that I mean a lot of side effects. I mean, if you prefer to do it that way, that's completely fine. But wouldn't it be better if we could just change the textures for one form only? So let's just not do that and go into the JSONUI world to customize our form even further. This is the root of our custom form that we made in all the other episodes. If you haven't watched those, I would recommend doing so, because we're gonna base our code on the form that we made in the last episodes. See that reference there to another panel? Well, that is what actually gave the panel the background and the title, but if you wanna make our own one, we obviously will have to remove that. And with that, we can also remove all the variables, but we have to make sure to give the panel its type back, because it's not inheriting the type from the referenced element anymore. Sadly, one variable that we removed also was the reference to our buttons panel. Normally, the vanilla panel had a variable where we could just insert the buttons panel. Since that isn't possible anymore, we should just add our buttons panel as a control to our main panel. So essentially what we did is, we just removed the background of the panel, which allows us to add our own custom background now. Making a background is actually quite straightforward because it's literally just an image. So all we have to do is to give the element the type image as well as the size which is just 100% of the parent element plus 5 pixel for a little bit of padding and of course the texture which it should display. In that case I'm reusing one of the vanilla assets which is just a black background. And of course our background won't just magically appear on our form so we gotta add the background as a control to our custom form as well. So when I opened the form I saw that yes the background applied but it was somewhat offset so I took a look into the vanilla files and after clicking myself through a bit I saw that there was a panel indent which somehow offset the panel by 16 pixels in the X direction. So thanks Microsoft, I guess. Well, in that case, let's just create our very own indent panel, which does have that 16 pixels offset and move our controls into that new indent panel. And wow, it actually centered our buttons again. Well, that's good, I guess. But I do have to admit that a black background isn't exactly what we're looking for. So let's create our own background. So I've created this black square and placed it inside a folder and then referenced it in our custom background. And now you might ask how this black square can turn into a background. And well the short answer is it can't. At least not on its own. Because what we actually need is to create a 9 slice file for it. The file is literally just the name of the texture with a .json at the end and will apply automatically. But now you may ask what the heck is even a 9 slice? Well, let's look at a normal texture first. Whenever we try to resize it, you guys can see that the corners and sides always get stretched and squashed depending on how we scale it. And that's where 9 slices come into play, because they split the texture into 9 pieces, hence the name 9 slice. All of these 9 pieces have a different behavior when they are scaled. For example, everything marked in green doesn't scale at all when you resize the texture. Everything marked in yellow only scales in one direction, either horizontally or vertically, depending on which side you're looking from. And then we also have the blue element, which will scale both horizontally and vertically at the same time, which also makes up the biggest area of the texture. So let's do one manually real quick. I have a side piece right here which can only scale vertically, and then I also have a corner piece which won't scale at all. And then I have another side piece which can only scale horizontally this time. And if you apply this logic for every single element, you get a beautifully scaled texture. Just like this one. Alright, now let's see how we can implement that in JSONUI. So all we really have to do is to set the base 9 slash size to 8, which is conveniently also the size of our texture. It's 8 by 8 pixels. And for the 9 slash size, I choose 3 because I think that makes the most sense for the corners here as we want the corners to be divided into 4 3x3 three three pieces. And as we can see now, our background got applied. But personally, I like it when the background is a little bit opaque, so we're gonna add the alpha property and set it to 0 
See? That's more like it. But we're still missing our title, so let's get that back real quick. I am creating an element here which I will give the type label because, well, it's gonna be text and text always needs the type of a label. And I will also give it the Minecraft 10 font because I know the community loves this font. And we can also refine it a bit by giving it a larger font size and also setting its correct position with anchors. And now we also need to give it a text, of course. And since we want to make the text a form text, we will have to add a binding. So we have access to that hashtag title text variable. And now we can literally just use that for our text. And now the label will have the text of the form. And let's not forget to add our label to our form by referencing it in our indent panel. Oh, and also make sure that the text is not behind the background itself by adding a layer property and setting it to some value, which will cause the text to be in front of the panel now instead of behind. I also love offsetting the label a bit so the title feels a bit more dynamic. Also, many of you guys told me that I should include a body in the form. That's why I did not modify the height of the form yet. Creating a body is just as straightforward as creating a title. We can literally just copy over the code from our title, paste it, and replace the binding with the binding that's used for the body. In that case, it's hashtag form text. And of course, we have to remember that we have to still modify the styles as we do not want it to look like the title itself. Either way, we can just reference the body just like we did with the title by putting it in the controls of our indent panel. And there it is. Although I would prefer if the text would have a background as well. Sadly, getting the sizes and the positions to work is not always straightforward, which is why I created a helper panel and removed the original body, at least temporary, because this panel is gonna help us out keeping everything centered and properly sized. It also allows us to add our background as a control just like we did in our main form. And of course we can add our text back which we removed because of the panel earlier. I just created an element called form body text and pasted the contents of our label that we created earlier into this new element. And since the parent is now responsible for the positioning, we don't really need all the anchors and styles anymore. So yeah, our body now has a background, but it's kind of offset. And then I just realized that our original background already had some offsets built in, which is why I made our very own ones just for this body here. Okay, but now we kind of need to move all of this down, right? If you guys watched the last episode, you should know a better way to do that. And that is with stack panels. Ah, oh, how I miss them. So realistically, we wanna have the form body and the buttons in one stack panel. So I'm gonna move them together just for ease. And then I'm gonna create a new element, which will be our content stack. And from here on, you should probably already know how stack panels work. So we have to set the type to stack panel. Then we gotta give it a size, an orientation, and of course the children, which are literally just gonna be our body and our buttons which we can literally just move from down here into the controls of our content stack. And see, that's more like it. But I think we can move it a little bit down by just adding a panel which will take up space inside the stack panel so it creates this nice padding. Alright, this is starting to look good, but you know what every good form needs? A nice close button. So I've created two textures, one of them being a normal close button, right? And the other one being the close button whenever it's hovered. Okay, so I'm gonna be honest, making custom buttons in any form is not easy and I wouldn't really recommend it. So if you have the option, please just modify the vanilla ones. In our case, I will just briefly go over the most important parts on making a custom button, in that case a custom exit button, and the styles you guys can just guess on your own. So here is the monstrosity and the most important thing is the type button that will make the element clickable. And then we have two new properties, default control and hover control. If you give those properties a value, in that case default or hover, it will cause the controls of the button that are named that way to only render when the condition is active, meaning default if there's nothing happening or hover when, when the button is hovered, obviously. So sound name should be self-explanatory, the sound when you click the button, right? But the most important property are the button mappings, because they tell what the button is actually for. In our case, we are just mapping the button to button.menu underscore exit, which will literally just exit any UI it's currently in, and also custom forms conveniently. And now we of course need to reference the button in our custom form, just like we did with every other element. 
And of course, don't forget to apply the styles that you prefer. For example, I want the button to be offset and always visible on top of everything. Alright, nice. And to verify that it worked, I'm gonna click the button now and as we can see in the chat, it says that no button was pressed, which is exactly the behavior that we expect from an exit button. Okay, we're getting pretty close. The only thing that we need to do is change the texture of the buttons. So I went into the vanilla files again and kind of just clicked myself through all of the different elements and found that the default button has a few variables with which we can change the texture in the different states of the button. The most interesting texture is probably the hover state texture to which I've created this texture for. And also don't forget, this texture will need a 9 slice since we need it to resize. Oh yeah, and for the default state for the button, I'm just gonna be reusing our background texture that we made earlier. To actually apply the textures, we literally just have to add those variables alongside the texture it obviously should apply. Please note that this method only works if your button actually extends the default vanilla button. So if you have a complete custom button, like we did with our close button, this method might not work. And yes, the texture actually applied to the buttons. Now we can do the final touches to our UI. For example, changing the button text to be white or modifying the opacity for our backgrounds. Or maybe even decreasing the size. And there it is, the fully custom server form. Only took us 5 episodes to get here. But I would say it's a win for the whole JSONUI community at the end of the day. And if you respect my work and all the resources I can provide, then please consider liking and subscribing. This is the last video for the server form series. If you guys want to see me modify something else, like maybe a top right stack, then please let me know in the comments. And with that, Bye-bye.